Hello and welcome to another episode of Autogafuel. Today with me, AJ and Michelle. And welcome to the new Porsche 718 Spider and the 718 Cayman GT4. Two hardcore machines with one purpose in mind, to provide a sheer unadulterated driving performance and pleasure. We are here in Scotland and we get to take these cars out and see what they can deliver. So strap in, because here we go. Cayman GT4 is a very low and wide car, of course, it has to be, it's a purposeful sports car. The headlamps are, of course, what we see from the standard 718, but I think they look really nice. Blacked out, LEDs, a lot of functional aerodynamics, for example, the vents at the top, a lot of vents and intakes, and channels to provide a very sleek air curtain. The splitter and the lip also provides a lot of downforce. In fact, this car has a very low coefficient of drag and can produce 122 kilograms of downforce, which is fantastic. You want more downforce, you want more weight, but you don't want more mass. So, speaking of mass, this car weighs 1,490 kilograms. Let's take it as 1,500. So it's not necessarily featherweight, but I think for the size of uh, the car and the performance and power it has, pretty nimble and pretty lightweight nevertheless. A very sleek front. I do like the design very much. It's 1.8 meters wide. The Cayman GT4 is 4.4 meters long and of course it has the Porsche adaptive suspension management, the adaptive dampers, but the entire chassis has been lowered by 30 millimeters. I do really like these gold wheels. <laughs> looks really, um, looks like a race car. You have Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires on 20 inch rims. Um, and of course you can also get the optional ceramic composite uh, discs. You have six piston brakes up front and four piston brakes at the rear. Functional aerodynamics again as we go along the side. Compared to the Spider, the main difference is of course the hard top roof. A very sexy coupe roof line with this large uh, haunch on the shoulder here on the rear axle. Being the GT4 and not the 911, uh, or the 718 rather, than the 911, this is a midship, mid-engine layout. So the six-cylinder boxer engine is low and wide and um, installed right in here. That's why you see the air intakes over there. It makes 420 horsepower. We'll take a closer look in a minute. But it's uh, really efficient. It's naturally aspirated, which is fantastic. High revving. But it can even do things like uh, cylinder management. So it can deactivate one bank of cylinders and run as a three-cylinder engine and keep shuffling between the two banks. Um, it's coupled with a six-speed manual transmission, which is also really nice. Short throw with dynamic powertrain mounts so that the vibrations are not carried over and it has a dual mass flywheel running the rear engines with a torque vectoring mechanical limited slip differential. A lot of great hardware and towards the rear everything comes together very neatly. A lot of round soft edges but that's what we know from the 718 anyway. The rear of the GT4 I think is a great balance between form and function because it looks fantastic, but also this large wing and the diffuser are very functional. Like I was talking about earlier, reducing drag and improving downforce is the name of the game here. So combined with this large fixed rear wing, the spoiler and the diffuser, this car makes 50% more downforce than the outgoing model and 122 kilograms of downforce in the end uh, that can be achieved with all of the aerodynamics that this car has to offer. This fixed wing along with the spoiler looks really great but we'll take a look from inside. It does hinder a little bit of the visibility uh, from the rear view mirror. Blacked out tail lamps, Porsche badging right across the center and the GT4 logo down there. Large diffuser and twin exhaust pipes which sound phenomenal. <laughs> The 
the front of the 718 Spider is really aggressive. I mean, because this shares the same base as the Cayman GT4, it has a lot of the GT4 elements now. So for example, the front splitter and the lip are very functional. In fact, this car produces so much of downforce, even the Spider without the roof and without the big rear wing. Of course, very functional intakes along the side, as well as this on the top here in front of the, in front of the bonnet. Really nice LED lights with these four point um, uh, spots around the edges. And as we go further to the side, you will also see the Spider logo lower down in the bottom of the bumper. This car is 1.8 meters wide and it really feels really slim and very short. This car looks super sexy, but it's really incredible how they've managed to strike a good balance between form and function. Because as I was mentioning, it produces a lot of downforce, even the Spider. And because this is the top of the range, um, so to speak, there's a lot of kit that you get as standard. But there are certain things that you also can get optionally, like for example, the ceramic composite disc rotors for the disc brakes. You can get them. I don't know if it really is useful if you're not going to drive these cars on the track all the time. Of course, they are ventilated and drilled. You get six piston brakes up front for the caliper and four pistons at the back. These rims, by the way, are 20 inches. There's different color schemes that you can get. There's even like these bronze golden color uh, wheels, which look really good um, depending on the color that you pick. As we go further down along the side, Again, just such a sexy stance. The car is 4.4 meters long. The Spider also comes with the PASM, the Porsche Active Suspension Management, but this chassis, the sport chassis, is also lowered by 30 millimeters. That also provides this very squat stance. Very short windshield. The car's height is, again, really short, but that really emphasizes the sporty character of the car. And this is the 718 series, of course, so that means it's a mid-engined car and not a rear engine like the 911, which means that the engine is actually down here and that's why we have the vents for the intakes for the engine. It is in front of the rear axle and not behind it like in the 911. Spider badging along the side and of course the, the haunches on the back, which is characteristic of the Spider. And the roof actually is operated manually. There's a soft top and we'll play a quick little time lapse right now to show you how you can put it up. It is a little bit of a handful, but Porsche says, you know, this is because they want to uh, ensure that they provide the more most lightweight, unadulterated uh, driving experience. And this is kind of how we see the most of the, the spiders in the past as well. So it's a manually operated roof, um, but it can withstand a lot of high speed. So you can even take this car up to 301 kilometers per hour. The Cayman GT4's top speed is 304. So near as makes no difference with a soft top. That is pretty fantastic. Around the back, nice haunch here over the rear axle, really large wheels. Again, just looks so really fantastic, really grippy. Um, these are Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. And yeah, let's take a look around the back now. At the back, well, this is where one prominent feature sticks out, to me at least, and that's the diffuser. The new Spider, as well as the Cayman GT4, have, like I mentioned, really great aerodynamics. They've worked a lot at this to provide a lot of downforce. Even here in the Spider, which does not have the rear wing, this diffuser, along with the splitter in the front, provides a lot of downforce. In fact, 50% more than the predecessor. It's also nice to see two large exhaust tips down there. The spoiler in the Spider um, is flush right here and it's a nice little lip spoiler, but at higher speeds it will lift up and you can also do that manually with the touch of a button inside the cabin. And yeah, this is perhaps not providing that much of real downforce, but it just looks kind of cool. Very similar to the standard 718 series that we've seen before. You have the large Porsche uh, name badging along the center, um, a reversing camera, some parking sensors, and that's about it. take a look inside the GT4. I like how the hinge also 
kind of swings out and upwards, gives you a good grip. Frameless windows, very sexy. Good materials on the top here as well as Alcantara down here. You do have quite a lot of options in terms of seat and the color, but um, unfortunately there are no um, options which exclude leather altogether. If you also look at the door handle, you will notice it's just a strap, again to kind of evoke that lightweight, track-focused uh, character of this car. This particular GT4 has the Club Sport pack, which means that it has actual racing bucket seats. You can even get it with a six-point harness, and it even has a roll cage in the back. And if you look at the passenger seat, there's also a fire extinguisher. Truth be told, while this looks really cool with the carbon fiber and it works really well on the track, and we'll look at that later on, it's definitely not something I would say is comfortable for everyday use. So it depends on what kind of a, um, what kind of a purpose that you want this car to serve. If it's a car that you're going to enjoy on twisty roads on an everyday basis, then perhaps stick to the regular sport seats. They have good enough side bolstering anyway. As we look inside, predominantly black, a lot of uh, black on the dashboard, black in the headliner, everywhere. So it is very sporty, but uh, that's the way I like it. Sitting inside is a little bit tricky, especially with these seats. And since this is a fixed roof and not the spider, you have to really squeeze yourself inside. But you know, it's a low sexy sports car. These are some things you're gonna have to live with. The seat really hugs you and holds you in place really well. I'm five foot eight or about 1.7 meters. I have plenty of headroom and you can see there's still quite a lot of space behind me in the seat, which means that taller passengers can also push the seat back and fit in really well. The footwell is also a little bit narrow, but generally there is definitely space for taller passengers or taller uh, drivers. The seating position can be adjusted, especially with uh, the other seats. You can get 18-way adjustable electric seats, but the steering wheel column can also be adjusted for reach and rake. Officially, it's called 718, but I've been using 718 interchangeably because I think it sounds pretty cool. What do you guys think? Which do you prefer? So the cockpit is very cool, very sporty. What we see regularly in most of the Porsches and of course at the, in the 718 series as well. You have a large tachometer in the middle, which has a gear position indicator, as well as a readout in the speedometer. And since we're here in Scotland, that reads out in miles per hour, but there's a speedometer on the left-hand side. And since this is a left-hand drive Eurospec version, um, it's in metric units and we have kilometers per hour on the left-hand side. The right section is actually a screen. So you have multiple different views. You can see, for example, your audio control, the vehicle status, like things like temperature and oil, um, the performance curve as well. You can see how much torque and power the car is making. Um, the G-force meter, a gear shift assist, which is pretty useful, especially out on the racetrack, and it helps you uh, make better shifts. A chrono. So the GT4, interestingly, does not come with the chrono package as standard, but the Spider does. But um, if you have the chrono package, then you can get the chronometer here and a tire pressure monitoring system. You can also get a full map, so it's really easy to um, use the navigation system while somebody else is using the infotainment. The GT wheel is also really simple, and I think that also evokes that um, pure driving pleasure. There's no buttons. You have your wipers, control stock, the stock here to navigate the menus for the screen. The left-hand side, you have the indicators and the pass light and the speech command button and also a cruise control button on the side. The chrono is on the top, although as Michelle noticed, and I guess this is what we see standardly, but it's all in orange, while the rest of the scheme, in this car at least, is all red. So that kind of doesn't really match. Perhaps the needle should have also been in red as well as the, 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 um, the, um, the scale along the side. But nevertheless, really nice cylindrical air vents. Um, cup holders, which I always like how Porsche does these really nicely engineered and since they sit right in front of the the air conditioning vents you can keep your bottles of water cool on a hot summer day. More storage with a lockable glove box damped with a USB power socket and some door pockets along the sides. This is a 4.6 inch touchscreen and Again, because it's the entry-level 718 and this generation has been around for a few years, it does, let's say, have a classic <laughs> vibe to it. 
And of course, it only comes with Apple CarPlay. There's no Android Auto. But for example, I like the details like this old 911 logo for the settings to um, get into your car menu. But the touchscreen itself is pretty slick and responsive. You know, if you're on a navigation and you bring your hand up to the map, um, then, you know, all the settings pop up. So it is really reactive and smart. It does feel a little bit outdated. It's not terrible. And of course, once the new generation comes out, we can expect a much more modern, futuristic um, infotainment. But all in all, I kind of like that there's so many buttons. You have a CD player, in fact. There's a slot down here for putting your SD card and your SIM card. And a lot of shortcut buttons, a knob, for example, for the zoom for the map and to press enter, also a volume knob. And therefore, you still have a lot of quick tactile buttons and knobs to use. This car does not have the dual zone climate control. That is an option. So you have a standard air conditioning with one, one zone where you can select the temperature and the fan speed and the different um, uh, vents. You don't have seat heaters in this version. But you would have that if the buttons were, I mean, the button would be, would, would be here if you had that option selected. But all of this is not the most important thing when it comes to this car. If you are buying this car, you're buying it for one reason, and that's because of the driving performance. And that is highlighted by this beautiful short throw six speed transmission. Really nice grip, Alcantara, and this cold metal, and has a nice short throw. The entire powertrain is on dynamic mounts so that this there is no flex and vibration from that which is being carried over into the um, body. GT4 logo down here. Since this has the fixed rear wing, you don't have any button to raise and lower the spoiler, but you have the auto blip function, which we can talk about later on. The PASM sport chassis where you can activate the sport mode and the loud exhaust mode and the first time in a GT um, uh, 718 a engine sh auto shut off button. The engine is also fairly smart and economical like we mentioned. It can shut off individual banks as well. There's also a particulate filter. Down here you have the buttons for the traction control and the stability program. And finally an ashtray with the 12 volt power socket. There's also an armrest in the middle which is soft and padded with Alcantara and it opens up to reveal a inductive phone charger. While the 718 might not have four seats, it also is pretty practical um, because at the back, thanks to that mid-engine, which is down here, you do get some more space at the back to put some more luggage. It even has some anchor points. But there's also a front trunk, and let's take a look at that. Well, there's actually nothing in the front, <laughs> which means you have a very large 150 liter uh, storage area down here to put some suitcases. You can easily fit two or three uh, cabin sized suitcases and a couple backpacks on the side. It's also really deep going all the way to the bottom floor of the car and very rectangular. So it is quite practical. Here's the key. Very standard Porsche uh, key fob. You have buttons to release the front and the back lids. I also like how the door handle kind of tilts upward. I like the hinge. The door itself has a very solid feel. Let's do a quick sound test. Nice clunk as it goes in. Frameless windows of course because this is the spider. Um, materials are also really nice. You get Alcantara and leather. Unfortunately there is no uh, synthetic leather or no leather options available. There are actually multiple different options for the seats altogether. Um, things like a classic pack for the Spider or a, um, a track special pack where you can get bucket seats for the GT4 and different color options as well. But uh, another cu uh, small things you will notice, for example, are the door handles. So in true GT4 and Spider style, you just have this tab, you don't have an actual handle, again, to just keep everything lightweight and give you the feeling that this car has zero compromises when it comes to lightness and speed. Getting inside is, well, it's not an SUV, <laughs> right? And we're used to SUVs nowadays, so it's good to have to bend down, put some muscle to lower, lower yourself into the car, but once you're in, man, this feels 
like a jet fighter. All the silver touches along the dashboard, the GT steering wheel, just the, you know, the way the seat hugs you. It's very purposeful. There's a lot more purposeful things that we need to talk about. So get inside and let's go through it one by one. First, let's take a look at the cockpit. You have a very analog, nice looking tachometer right in the middle, a speedometer on the left hand side. You get the speed readout down here as well. So you don't have to really keep looking back and forth. The right side of the cockpit, the instrument cluster is actually a screen which gives you a lot of useful information, such as some vehicle information like temperature. Um, you also have your audio controls. You can view an entire map, navigation, trip information, um, tire pressure monitoring system, chrono. So this, the Spider, by the way, comes as standard with the, the chrono package. Whereas, interestingly, it's an option on the Cayman GT4, which I think is a bit strange. I think they should be standard on both. And they actually also come with a app, so you can use your phone app um, to kind of see how much, uh, you know, monitor your track times, your lap times, um, kind of calculate where you can do a better line next time. So it's a, it's a conjunction with the car and your phone. It's a pretty interesting app. Gear shift assist, G-force, performance and torque meter, um, <laughs> and a lot of other useful information. Materials, again, top notch although albeit they are leather and no other option but I do like the color this is a very I think it's a very elegant color you know it's not just Alcantara and black like we uh, they, they can get in the Cayman for example here it's a little bit more I don't know classic because it has classic red color the um, air vents are also really really stylish looking large chrono of course right in the middle. Down here we have some temperature control for the dual zone climate control for the left side and the right side, vent control and seat heaters. These are buttons for example to uh, release the soft top and to couple it but you actually have to lift and lower it yourself. Let's take a look under the back lid. The lid itself is a little bit wobbly, that's just because it's very lightweight and this uh, hinge is also really lightweight. But thanks to this being a mid-engine car, since the engine is below this, then it's a boxer which is really flat and we'll take a closer look at that because unfortunately this is, <laughs> this is all you can see, quote unquote, of the engine which is nothing at all really. But you do have a generous amount of space inside here um, and of course there's a trunk in the front so overall it's fairly practical. Of course, unlike the, the, the uh, 911, you don't get four seats uh, in the Spider, but um, yeah, this is definitely useful for a weekend's worth of luggage for two people. Plus with the front, it is a lot more practical. So let's take a look under there as well. All right, let's take a look under the bonnet, the frunk, the front trunk. By the way, the curb weight of the 718 Spider and likewise the GT4 Cayman is 1,500 kilograms thereabout. So here actually, this is actually a very usable space. It goes all the way down pretty much to the bottom floor of the car. It's very rectangular. It's about 150 liters. So there's plenty of space to put, for example, here's my um, regular cabin baggage and it fits in really easily. And we can put at least another one and a backpack or, or two on the side. This in conjunction with the, the luggage area in the back it is not that impractical at all, thanks to that flat six engine. Well, of course, we are not able to see the engine on the car because it's tucked away underneath uh, in the middle of the car. So Fabian has been nice enough to pull one out and put it up here, plonk it on top of this so we can take a closer look. Fabian, thanks. Uh, and maybe you can tell me a little bit more about this engine. So first of all, as far as I've understood, this is based, uh, based on the same family as the four liter uh, six cylinder boxer engines from the 911 Carrera, right? It is from the, the 992 engine. And um, if we talk about family, it means not that it, the, the, the parts are exactly the same. It's more about that we overtake some principal things. It's like bore and stroke and the oil pan, the lightweight oil pan made of plastic. 
or the piezo technique, for example. Everything else, you wouldn't find any part number which is the same on the 992. Everything was designed completely new, especially for the GT4 and for the Spider. Yep. Okay, great. Well, like I was just telling you earlier, I drove the 718S, uh, uh, um, Cayman S, and as much as that Turbo 4 you know, had good performance, it just sounded like an angry vacuum cleaner. And we're all happy to see, at least purists are happy to see a naturally aspirated, high revving um, petrol Boxer 6 back in the back in the 718 as well. So again, so it's a six cylinder Boxer and we'll talk a little bit more about what makes a Boxer engine unique in a minute. But headline figures, for example, are 420 PS, which is metric horsepower and 420 Newton meters. Um, of peak torque from 5,000 RPM to 6,800 RPM, correct? And the red line is at 8,000 RPM and the power, the peak power comes all the way at the top at uh, 7,200 RPM. Yeah, so you really gotta, really gotta stretch the engine out. Absolutely, and yeah. the sound and even you will feel it if you're sitting inside of the car um, between 7,500 up to 8,000 revs. That's how we would say that's where the magic happens, uh, up to you. Very linear power delivery as well. Um, and so 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.4 seconds. VMAX for the uh, Cayman GT4 is 304 horse, uh, kilometers per hour. And for the Spider, it's a little bit less at 301 uh, kilometers per hour. So, um, Michelle, if you come around here, maybe we can spend a couple minutes talking about uh, some of the unique things that are new to this engine. So you said something about the injectors and the oil pan. Yeah, now the oil pan you can see over here, it's a black one made of plastic. Mm -hmm. The old one from the 981 Spider GT4, it was made of a uh, casted, casted um, one. Um, this one is made of plastic, it's round about, you have a 36% uh, uh, weight reduction. Mm -hmm. um, and also the piezo technique is completely unique in the, in the 718, we never heard it before. So we also have, we took the, the piezo technique from the um, 992 and adopted it to the 718 for the first time. So also bore and stroke are the same like on the 992 and with the GT3 as well, they all have the same. And also we changed completely the, the, the type of the valve train. The, the valve train was, normally we have the tappets, um, but they won't fit and if you have run about 8,000 breaths. So we had to change it completely. So now we have those uh, ball rockers, or others say um, roller cam uh, followers, mm -hmm. and they are also completely new designed. As you can see it over here, mm -hmm. they are completely new designed, and also the intake manifold is completely new. So even though it's part of the same family, uh, not so much uh, uh, similar. So Michelle, over here you can see the the roller, uh, the camp over here. You can see the, the roller cam followers, or probably we had around about five different um, words for, for that. Um, some say ball rockers, for example. Um, they are, as I said, mentioned completely new. Yeah, you have the piezo technique over here, and um, also the, the spark plug from the 918 Spider. So you were telling me these new injectors use uh, special types of crystals with when they're given voltage, expand and contract in milliseconds, and you're able to have different uh, injections up to five times within one suction stroke, which is pretty incredible. Um, this entire powertrain, so the engine and the transmission, are on dynamic mounts, which means that the, the vibrations are not transmitted to the, the, uh, the, the, the body. There's also a dual mass flywheel, which also tries to cushion some of the fluctuations in the power delivery. Short throw six speed manual, like we mentioned. Of course, rear wheel drive only with a limited slip differential. And another, maybe last uh, concluding words about what makes a Boxer engine special. Well, first of all, if you look down here, six cylinders, but these are horizontally opposed uh, cylinders or uh, horizontally opposed pistons. And you can see each piston is uh, connected to an individual crank pin or a journal. And you can see that the corresponding pistons are kind of at a 180 degree order uh, within each other. So they're kind of like boxers going back and forth. And one set is here, and if you look inside, there's another set and a third set over there, so the three pairs. And in this way, there is no primary or secondary 
unbalanced forces. So the flat six engine is a very balanced uh, engine, this boxer configuration. There are different variations like a flat V12 where there's two pistons per journal, but that's, that's for another video. Um, but um, uh, Fabian, you were also telling me that this engine also to meet some of the new regulations in efficiency and uh, emissions. For example, it can shut off one of the cylinder banks, so it can run as a three-cylinder engine uh, on a light load, constant load. And you can oscillate, it will oscillate between the two cylinder banks to ensure that there's enough to, uh, you know, uniform flow of exhaust gases. Um, there's also a particulate filter. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, to, for the cylinder control, we also changed the benches every 20 seconds. Um, and we really could use, reduce the, the fuel consumption a lot. And together with the start stop system, which we have the first time in a uh, GT car, we never had that before. Um, we save really a lot of fuel, can that? And also the, the new auto particle filters, um, we, we fit to the moder most modern um, emission standards, U60 TEM, for example. Well, it's a fantastic engine, really exciting stuff. There's only one thing left to do, and to, is actually put it to the test and let it sink. Let's take the Cayman GT4 out on the racetrack <laughs> where it's meant to be. First of all, I'm going to turn on the sports exhaust. Turn the auto blip on so I can concentrate on the track and put the suspension in the stiffer setting, the PASM. This car also has the Club Sport package, which means I have bucket seats, carbon fiber, a roll cage, and under Michelle over there, there's a fire extinguisher. It is also quite loud in here, but like we were discussing, the most um, things that give you the most joy sometimes aren't the most practical, and this is case in point. So the knock -hill circuit is a pretty interesting circuit. It really tests and tries to unsettle a mid-engine car like this. So as we start picking up pace, we'll talk a little bit more about that. A lot of blind crests, and if you're on the power too early, because it's a mid-engine, the front becomes a little bit lighter, and then you find a little bit of understeer that high revving, naturally aspirated six-cylinder boxer engine is really right at home. Brakes are also really, really, really sharp. Gives you a lot of confidence. After this hairpin, now we're on the home straight, so let's take it up to the red line. There's also a nice shift indicator which turns orange and red to help you shift. Brake hard over here, but turn in let the car balance itself, control that little bit of oversteer and understeer, brake hard again, turn in, use the curb to run wide, late entry into this corner as we go up into the chicane, it's blind, try to keep it in a straight line to not unsettle the car, again being mid-engine the front becomes a little bit lighter. These seats are also I think really fantastic if you plan to do a lot of track days with the GT4 because they really keep you in place really well. The Club Sport steering wheel also gets this um, uh, center marker stripe on the steering wheel, so it really helps get your bearings when you're making tight corners like this. The auto blip feature is really fantastic when you want to just focus on learning the track and not bother with doing the heel show. The mid-engine flat boxer uh, configuration means that it is a bit tricky to access and maintain. You always have to remove the engine um, and the subframe, but that wide, compact, low center of gravity that it provides in this midship configuration really gives you a great balance around corners like this. Then with that torque vectoring limited slip differential, when you're making your way around chicanes, it really rotates so nicely along its vertical axis. This car really feels right at home, even in a track like this, which is a little bit unforgiving of, there we go, like that, with a little bit of understeer, unforgiving for mid-engine cars. It certainly is very loud here in this GT4 spec, not a lot of sound deadening. I was actually doing quite a lot of laps, about 15 laps earlier in the same car, and I'm filming right now, just after that, and the brakes are not fading, the engine doesn't feel tired. Everything is still as sharp. It just says, let's keep going, let's keep going. And that engine noise is just addictive and exhilarating. 
and it can even keep up with its big brother, like you can see in front of me, the GT3 RS 911. Very well balanced. Steering is also a lot heavier when you're on the racetrack. It gives you really good feedback. The thin spoke also means you can really grasp it with confidence. The stiffer setting for the PASM is also much nicer to use on the racetrack because it gives you, um, we're going to let some faster people pass us now, um, but yeah, the PSM in the stiffer setting allows you to, uh, allows the car to really adapt to the undulations on a racetrack much better. Visibility out the back is definitely compromised a little bit because of that large rear wing, but Visibility out the side and the front is pretty good. Catching up to the GT3 RS, so I'm going to back off a little bit. Oh yeah, man, this is <laughs> really right at home. Brake hard, just let the car settle itself as you throttle down these corners. Late entry, gently power on so that you don't get understeer. Late entry here down and up into the blind chicane. Keep it in a straight line like that. Turn in, run wide. The throttle response is also sharp and instant. And that linear power delivery because of the naturally aspirated engine means you really know it's uh, where the power is coming in. It's very predictable, it's very manageable. And that short shifter with the dynamic mounts gives you such tactile precision when you're shifting. So, all in all, the GT4 really is right at home out here on the racetrack. All right, well, we are out here on a beautiful day here in the Scottish Highlands and I have a 718 Spider. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this for a Sunday. Well, maybe it just might. <laughs> wow, what a monster. I mean, okay, there's so much to talk about. So let's break it down piece by piece. Since anyway, the Spider and the Cayman GT4 have the same powertrain, drivetrain, chassis and suspension. So we can translate these two um, to be very equivalent on their, for their on-road driving performance. So let's start with the powertrain. That engine, we took a detailed look at it and boy, wow, this is really capturing the essence of the Porsche six-cylinder boxer engine. I mean, there's nothing that can come close to it. The Turbo 4, I drove that a couple years ago when the 718 was launched and it just sounded like an angry vacuum cleaner. Yes, it had pretty good power and poke and it was very, uh, uh, you know, had a lot of torque, but it just was not emotional enough, was not really engaging. This on the other hand, I mean, what a gem of an engine, really, it's fantastic. Instant throttle response. Oh, <laughs> it sounds fantastic. Michelle's also laughing. I mean, this is what driving is about. You just have a big grin plastered on your, uh, on your, uh, on your face and just constantly smiling. Um, yeah, it's a linear power delivery like we were talking about earlier with Fabian. Because of that naturally aspirated uh, induction, it means that there are no peaks or surges or flat spots when it comes to the power or the torque. But at the same time, it means that 420 horsepower, or the PS rather, the metric horsepower, you only see that all the way at the top of the, the rev range, right around the 7,200 um, mark. So till then, you're not really getting all that juice out of this engine. But that isn't to say that it's not engaging enough or there's a lag or it feels sluggish. Oh, not at all. There's plenty of poke at any time and you can put your foot down and it will just shove you back into your seat. This does weigh 1,500 kilograms, which is not light necessarily, but it's not hefty either. It's a good 
middleweight, I would say, because it provides a lot of mechanical grip. Speaking of mechanical grip, that fork vectoring limited slip differential at the rear also means that when you're going around a corner, there's plenty of shove at mid-corner when you put your foot down. Because the torque vectoring part of the differential means that it will break the inside wheel a little bit and the mechanical limited slip means that it will push torque to the outside wheel. So when you're going around a corner like this and you put your foot down, the car just rotates around its vertical axis so beautifully. The dual mass flywheel also means that when you shift up or you shift down, there's that little bit of cushioning that it provides thanks to that dual mass uh, effect so that there's a very smooth transition even with small fluctuations in the power. All right, the gearbox itself is fantastic. This auto blip, I have it on. So right now I'm in third gear. I shouldn't be in third gear. I shift it down to second. There's that instant blip and it perfectly rev matches and I don't get a jerking motion uh, if I don't heel toe or uh, rev match myself, which is just, I mean, come on, that's just sublime. It's fantastic the way it feels. Of course, you can turn it off, click of a button, that's it, it's off, and you can take charge of it yourself. The gearbox is also, the ratios are pretty well placed, so you always have the right power band. It's always an important thing to, you know, the, 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 the marriage between an engine and a transmission is so important, and this really, you know, works harmoniously with the engine. All right, then let's talk a little bit about the steering. Porsche steering, this GT steering wheel means there's nothing in the way to get in, uh, to distract you from the driving, no drive mode selector, nothing. You have a few options down here for changing the, the suspension or changing the, the uh, exhaust. Of course, I have the exhaust in the loud mode right now when all the valves are opened, because you need to hear that. It's part of this, uh, this, this visceral experience with the open top. Never get old, no way. But the steering is really great as well. Really progressive. It's a little bit light, but it doesn't mean that it's it's numb. There's plenty of feedback. This uh, the grip itself is a little bit thin, but that's kind of the style with Porsches anyway. It's got a nice Alcantara grip, and you feel what the wheels are doing at all time because it's mid-engine. The engine is right behind us and I'm sitting in front of the engine, so there's a great, perfect 50-50 weight distribution. And that also means that the steering really interacts with you and tells you exactly how much grip the front wheels have and where they're heading towards, and they respond to you almost telepathically. We're going around a little village now. Have to be a little bit careful. I, even though I'm very used to driving on the left-hand side of the road, I am not that used to driving with a left-hand steering car on the left-hand side of the road. It's a bit of a double whammy. So, uh, time to slow down and focus. But here, it gives me an opportunity to test out, let's put the suspension in the stiffer mode. Already, even though I was so excited by the sheer performance, even with the softer suspension mode, it felt a little bit jiggly when you're going a little bit faster on the country roads. So don't expect a magic carpet ride. I know you don't. You're like, Asia, come on, man. I know what you're talking about. It's a, it's, a, it's a GT car, it's a Spider, it's a, or, you know, it's a GT4 Cayman. It's not meant to be, you know, an S-Class. And it isn't, nowhere close. And you should be aware of that. So with the stiffer suspension setting, it does feel ever so slightly, ever so slightly sharp on jagged edges. But on the whole, it's not that bad at all. But for country roads, you want to leave it in the normal suspension mode. And now you get a little bit of a little bit of compliance in the suspension, and it's really not that bad. Yes, the seats are a little bit stiff, you know, they're not, they're not too soft and squishy, but that stiffness provides good grip and they hold you in place. This Alcantara also means that you're not sliding around um, the, uh, you know, when you're going around corners. That also provides a little bit more friction and holds you in place. The side bolstering as well helps out. Uh, you can adjust all of these things to your heart's content as many times as you want. So, pretty cool. The instrument cluster is also really useful. I mean, right now I have kilometers per hour, but I can also have the miles per hour speedometer 
right in front since we're here in Scotland. And I can put the navigation in front of me. There's also a cruise control which I can set on the highway and in that way cruise long distances in comfort. The lumbar support and other adjustments that the seat provide also means that it's it's very uh, easy to find a comfortable seating position. The steering column also adjusts for reach and rake. Here in the city the steering wheel is that lightness actually comes into play again and it's very easy to make quick corrections very easy to navigate. The seating position is very low of course and the car is quite wide but it still feels compact enough it kind of hugs itself around you. Because the roof line is quite low thanks to this small windshield you kind of feel like you're in a cocoon. The car really wraps around you very nicely and of course with the roof off sky's the limit quite literally. So there's plenty of visibility out the side. The back is a bit hit and miss you have a very little uh, area where you can see out back, but you can also have it with the rear view camera, and that of course I think is a must have. You don't want to scratch this beautiful car um, in tight parking spaces. So, wow. For a day like this, on a road like this, this car fits in like a glove. It's perfectly at home on these twisty roads just to help you become part of the landscape, become part of the emotion and just seize the day. I think it does a fantastic job. And manual gearboxes are coming back into fashion and Porsche recognizes this as well with the naturally aspirated engines. And this is something that I spoke to some of the, the managers and the product uh, experts here as well. This is something that they want to you know, signal to the world and to the market that, hey, we at Porsche, we know what real driving is about. We know what joy in mechanical operation is all about, and we want to give that to you. So here, this, this is their swan song. This is how they're providing, you know, you know um, to their promise. The navigation also is pretty intuitive. It changes screen and gives you the notification, although, when we were initially setting up the car to do the filming, they had two separate settings to change the language. So when I changed the language, it only changed the language in this touchscreen, and my display on the instrument cluster was still in German, and I had to go to a separate menu within here to change that again. I don't get it. It should just be one, one simple way to change it. Um, but, um, all right. Now we're getting into some more high-speed roads, I hope. But uh, you can turn off the exhaust as well and then it becomes a little bit quieter if you don't want it to be loud all the time and just have a peaceful drive. There's also the engine shut off and also the, the cylinder deactivation and the management system where it will shuffle between the two cylinder banks to provide a little bit of a better um, a mileage. And uh, right now it says we're getting about 16 liters for 100 kilometers, which is quite a lot. But the rated figure is about 10.8 or 10.9. I think a realistic number if you drive on the highway and of course you take this out on some twisty roads as well, you can see numbers around, I would say 11 to 12, which should be quite possible. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult, but uh, already it's going down to 15, so with a lighter foot, it's not that uh, bad at all. And this new system also, uh, this new uh, filtration system for the exhaust has particulate filters, so that it's also more economical and compliant with the new Euro 60 temp emission regulations. In these narrow roads, it doesn't feel big, it doesn't feel cumbersome, it feels really nimble, really lightweight. Let me take a U-turn and we can see. I think this road is closed up ahead. So, good chance for us to test out the turning circle. Because it's a mid-engine rear wheel drive car, the front axle is free to turn as much as it needs to. Of course, you can raise the seat a little bit if you want to look over 
uh, the front bonnet too. But it's very easy to place the car. Also thanks to the two haunches in the front that give you a very clear indication as to where the front two wheels are. But yes, just operating these mechanical interfaces, the throttle pedal, the brake pedal also, they have such great feel. The six piston calipers in the front and the four piston calipers in the rear also give you tremendous stopping power like that. The Porsche stability management system is also really smart. They've also tuned it to be more sensitive and react in much more um, quicker increments so that uh, the traction control and the stability control are all managed really well. There's also quite a lot of refinement. Of course with the roof down there's a lot of noise but since I have the side windows up it's not unbearable. There's no squeaking or rattling of course. It's a brand new car but it doesn't feel you know like there's anything loose. It feels very tightly put together. All the materials fit in really well with each other and just that that exhaust note and that acceleration and that throttle response is addictive. It's a drug that you'll be happy to be addicted to. It really is. The steering just gets heavier and such great communication. And these narrow roads are where this, where this car feels at home. <laughs> it just darts in. It's almost telepathic the way it just darts in. I've driven several Porsches before, but um, I think this lightweight chassis, this smaller compact dimension, this mid-engine layout, and this naturally aspirated six-cylinder boxer with a six-speed manual, it's just, it's just the greatest hits of Porsche. You know, it's, a, it's, it's G3, it's, it's, it's a super brand, it's a super group. It's all the best parts of Porsche coming together in one place <laughs> and boy does it come together wow all right well only one thing perhaps I could say that maybe if I had to find something to nitpick about would be that maybe the suspension can feel a little bit rough on bad roads but that's because of the bad road and it's still a low car, it's lowered by 30 millimeters, like we discussed. So but that's something that, you know, if I had to nitpick with a gun to my head. But otherwise, I mean, for a hundred grand it is a bit expensive, but you're getting a fantastic car. You really are. All right, let's summarize today's episode of the 718 Cayman GT4 and the 718 Spider, two cracking cars. The Cayman starts at around 96,200 euros and the Spider starts at a little bit less than that, about 94,300, 400 euros. But put a couple options and Nears makes no difference, they're both starting around 100 grand. That is a bit expensive, it's already encroaching into the Carrera territory. But even though it's a 718, it is the best and most engaging 718 out there thanks to that incredible powertrain with the naturally aspirated Boxer 6 engine. Truth is, the Spider is also not that practical. You have that manual roof. Of course, the luggage compartment is not that um, expansive. It's only a two-seater. The Cayman GT4 as well. You do have a little bit more space in the back, but the seats are quite tight and uncomfortable, especially if you go for the Club Sport package. It's really loud inside and both of these cars with their lowered suspension and you know stiffened chassis, they're not the most comfortable to ride. But that's not why you buy this car. You don't buy it for practicality, you buy it for the performance. Some other uh, interesting things that I want to mention as well, for example with the Spider, even though the roof is off, there is so much of rigidity in the chassis, there was absolutely no flex. And I think of the two, this is definitely my pick. It's a lot more evocative, a lot more emotive, and it's just more engaging, especially because of that open roof. You can enjoy that engine sound and the landscape so much better just because it's a cabriolet and you're not sacrificing any of the uh, flexibility or the chassis uh, because of that. In the end, the mileage 
was about 12 liters for 100 kilometers. When you're driving, you know, very cautiously, you could even perhaps achieve numbers around 11, but that's not what these cars are about again. Overall, if you're okay with the fact that they're not that practical and you're okay with spending quite a lot for a 718, nothing else compares. So that's my verdict. Good things are not always the most sensible, but that's why we love them. So let me know what you think. Put it down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you're new here. Follow our other channel, Auto G Fuel, where we put smaller versions of the same videos if you don't have the time to watch all of this in detail. Start off with the smaller episodes and then come back to the full episode later on. Follow us on Instagram. We also put a lot of behind the scenes pictures and stories where we can interact with you. You can tell us what you want to see and we will cater to that in the videos. Even some small special episodes purely on IGTV. So, Michelle and AJ, we're signing off. We hope to see you guys next time.